Hello, everybody. I am developer relations engineer David Jones Chilardi, and today we're going to learn how we can upload files into Langflow, but specifically just files, no LLM, no agent or anything like that, that we can use not only to upload files, but then to process those files. Maybe I want to inject a bunch of files into, say, a vector store for a RAG application or something along those lines. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll take a look at my setup here. So I really have two things going on in this particular case. On the left-hand side is a file upload utility that I wrote, just something super simple. Um, I will include the link below in the description so you can go check it out. And this will just help us put our file upload, you know, our requests together. And I'll explain all that as we go through it. On the right-hand side is just a super simple file-only based flow. Now, later on about middle through this video, um, I will show you a RAG application as well and how to do this, but I want to keep it simple in the start just so we can kind of make sure that, you know, we've got track of uh, all the things that we're doing here. So in this case, you'll see I have a file component. Um, I don't have any files in my Langflow just yet. And then just a super simple chat output. Okay. So generally speaking, file uploads in Langflow are really a two-step process, right? The first step is I want to upload the file into my Langflow. Um, I can either use the UI, which I'm just about to do in a moment, or I can use the file API. Um, and that's what we're going to do here on the left-hand side. Now, once I have a file in Langflow, the second step of that is to apply that file to whatever component, in this case, the file component, um, so it can process on it. So let's go ahead and use the UI. I'm just going to start with this because this will help break it down a little bit. Okay. Um, so let's say that I go to my UI and I select a file. Well, here right now, this is essentially me doing what? I am uploading the file into Langflow. That's that first step, right? And so now the file here exists in my component. I can choose it and then it's ready to go. So when I build this component or if I execute this flow, then what I'm essentially doing is I am tweaking the value. I'm giving the path to this particular file to the component so it can do something with it. Now, when I do things externally, like if I'm working with my own application and I want to use the API, it's essentially the same thing. I'm just using the API to do it instead. OK, so let's go ahead and do that same thing. I'm going to get rid of that file here. I'm actually going to delete it full out. OK, so I have nothing left once that finishes. There we go. OK. And now I'm going to move to the left-hand side to this little utility. Now, do you need this utility to do file uploads in Langflow? No. I just built this to make this easier. Um, so you can also, you know, it'll help you construct um, your calls. And it actually gives you working code snippets, right? So we're going to go through all of that. OK, so let's take a look at the far, far left. You see I need my host. So I am actually using one of my Langflow servers here to do this. So this is a real host instead of just localhost. And there's a reason why I did that. We'll get to in a second. Now, the flow ID. This could be either the flow ID or if it's supported, which most cases will, the endpoint name, right? So I'm using this endpoint name. It is a bit easier uh, to just do an endpoint name um, because you don't have to worry about a unique UID every single time and it will be, it'll persist no matter what that ID is. Now the file component name, where am I getting that from? Well, I want to tweak the value. I'm gonna add that file path to this file component. So if I click on it, you see I clicked on it, I go to controls. And I get this ID right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that, pop that in here. Now, notice as I'm filling this out, it's also filling this out, right? That's part of the app. It kind of dynamically builds this as you go. I'm going to go ahead and grab that fake resume, add it in. You can see some more code and things updated. Uh, and now if I upload it here, I'm going to fail. Why? Well, because in this particular case, I am, in fact, using a deployed version of Langflow that is secure which means I need a Linkflow API key. Um, now, in this particular case, what I need to do is I need to go to my settings. I'm going to go to my Linkflow API keys, and you can see I have all these keys. So normally, I would add a new one. I've already got one set up for this. But this is the way I'm then going to authenticate, right? This is super important when you're using an authenticated version of Langflow. Um, if you were just using this on like your local host or you didn't have a secure, if you didn't have the security settings on, you wouldn't need this option. But if you do, you need that key. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these. I'm going to grab my key here. And then I'm going to pop it in. Now, when I do this, notice what happened here. You'll see that the code here will automatically apply this. So this is a nice way that you can get an example of exactly what your payload should look like. Because if you need that key, you need this x-api-key value in your headers, right? That's where it's coming from. So let's go ahead and say upload. Now, again, what this is going to do, this is going to not only upload the file, but it's going to execute the flow. 
right? And I can see I got a response from my upload response. Now, here's a key piece of information about uploading files using the Upload API. Um, when you use that API, okay, you're going to get this Upload Response object. In it is the path. That path is the thing that tells Langflow this is where this file exists. So you're going to pass this path in the code that I just executed underneath the hood here. You'll see that I get here. Here's my Upload Response. I'm getting that dot .path. That matches the path in the upload response. And then we're just going to pass that into the file, the file component itself, right? So if I come back over here, remember a moment ago I had deleted that, but now I have this fake resume text in here um, because we just uploaded it with the API, right? So again, this little helper utility just helps you put all the pieces together uh, and then you can use this code uh, to do something with that. And in this particular case, if we were to take a look, you can see I spit out the document. That's all I'm doing because this flow is super simple and is just spitting out to a chat output. Now, I did mention earlier that I was gonna do something uh, about the middle of the video where we are gonna be a little bit more complex because a lot of the questions that we see um, are with folks that are trying to say, upload their data into say like a RAG uh, application. They wanna get it into a vector store, something along those lines. So what I've done here on the right-hand side as, is I've made this just a little bit more complex. This is just a basic RAG setup where I have the same file component. But now I'm going to go ahead and chunk through that text just like I would in a RAG application. I'm going to ingest that data into a vector store. In this case, I'm using AstroDB. It could be one of many. It does not have to be. Uh, and then I'm just taking whatever output comes from that. OK. All right. So I'm going to go through the same process. Now, this time a little bit different. I do have my database. I've got my file upload database and I have my file only RAG collection. That is where I've configured that that vector store component, that is where this is pointing to. So what I want to do in this case is I am going to do something fun. Let's go ahead and say grab um, Alice in Wonderland, and we're going to ingest that chunk through the whole book. And we're going to store all that data into our, into our vector store, um, and we're going to do that with the file API, right? So no, again, notice there's no LLM, there's no agent or anything here. OK, so we're going to go through the same process we did earlier, right? Now, I've already got that uh, that URL in there, the uh, the one from my server, so I can leave that. But this time, I'm going to say file only rag, because why? Because I gave it an endpoint name of file dash only dash rag. So I'm putting that in the flow ID. Could I use the flow ID? Yes, right? I could use either one interchangeably. Now, this time, though, that file component name is going to change, right? It's a different flow, a different file component. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to grab this one. Here we go. I'm going to pop this one in here. And instead of that fake resume, I'm going to scroll down all the way until I can find my books. Where are they? Aha. Alice in Wonderland. OK, great. Um, and the key is the same, right? That doesn't change. So I'm going to go ahead and say upload. OK, great. So I can see that the request finished, right? And if I come over here again in my file component, and boom, there it is. So it uploaded, right? It uploaded uh, Alice in Wonderland, the PDF, the whole book. Um, and it's in my Langflow, and then it processed it. And why don't we go ahead and do a check over here in my vector store. And boom. So I, you can see I have 177 records. If you take a look at these, these are now chunks of vectorized data. So it has chunked the data. I didn't do any like special chunking or semantic chunking or anything. I literally just did it off the character count um, that conforms with the NVIDIA um, embedding model that I use, this 1024 dimensions, you might notice uh, over here, uh, you can see that my chunk size is in fact 1024. I was conforming to um, the, that particular embedding model. But here you go, right? So now I've chunked the whole book. Um, and again, I was able to do that with the upload API and able to execute this particular flow, right, without an LLM or an agent or anything. I can just do processing on the file or files if I want to. Um, given my particular use case. And there you have it, uploading files using the File Upload API in Langflow. Pretty darn simple to do. You don't need an agent or an LLM. You can just process them directly. And if you like our content and would like to see more, please like and subscribe below, share it with your friends. And as always, happy coding. Take care.